I'm Anna Hardman. Uh, I want to welcome everyone to this seminar, which we're very much looking forward to. Pascal Laborier is a professor of political science at the Université Paris-Nanterre uh, and associated with CNRS, ISP. Her topic is Mapping Exiles, you know because you're here. Uh, and the subtitle is Bridging Knowledge and Advocating for Scholars at Risk, a topic that many of us find extremely important, extremely present at this time. Uh, I, Professor Laborier most recently has edited uh, a, a book called Academics in a Century of Displacement, The Global History and Politics of Protecting Endangered Scholars, which is now coming out in April of this year. Um, she, uh, and as an economist, I have to note that um, economists have gotten very excited about studies that look at the effect of posting uh, displaced scholars in the 1930s, when many people were fleeing Germany and then the countries occupied by Germany, and how, how big those people's contribution was to the host countries where, where they were being protected mm -hmm. and housed. Um, Professor Laborier, I think I should let you start. <laughs> Thank you very much, Anna, for this presentation. Thank you to be there. And thank you to Sabina and uh, also to Miriam for the organization of all that thing. So here my presentation. I am very quick, uh, but to give the context, three points uh, about uh, um, some uh, political issue and engagement, how to make uh, visible the trajectory and, of scholars and artists exile and about mapping exile and the conclusion about the title of the conference. Why, why I choose that title with uh, Anna and Miriam. So my personal um, background, some information, my, uh, my activity to be professor at the university and teaching, I have PhD. And uh, my first specialty was uh, Germany, mostly 18th, 19th century, and uh, a part about contemporary politics also. But now, thanks uh, seven years, I turned into this migration topic. So if the book would be published, academic, you mentioned that book, it will be published by Springer in April now, so in one month. And how? it happens to, to come from German Cameroonese to current migration. So it was a, a political experience because um, in um, two, two, 2015, I was um, um, nominated as advis special advisor to the Ministry for Higher in Institution and Research in the field of humanities and social sciences. But at that time, wonder when I came to the ministry, one day after that, it was uh, the very sad events in Palmyra in Syria, where the Khaled al-Assad was executed by the Islamic State in Palmyra with a, you know, online execution. And that I was uh, a long time in Germany because I was a leader of a research center there. I have many connections to German colleagues and they phoned to me to say, okay, there are many archaeologists, they, they were um, studying in France, you want to come to France, help us. So you know you have a political position, you think you can do all what you, you want, but it's, it wasn't possible because uh, all the money are in the research institute center or university and nobody has something to, to offer a position to those archaeology and the family. So what I, um, my success was to help with uh, four times four months, what is nothing. So the German proposed a three-year position with a, a contract. It was more better. So at that time, we also know about the situation in, in Turkey. It was very bad. And also in the 2016, it was a petition, the academic for peace, and many of the colleagues lost their position. So it means that uh, um, I was uh, thinking with many colleagues how to create a program 
to make invitation for short term because in France you have a position where you are nothing in the French university. We don't have really short term positions or assistance, something like that, like here or in Germany. So the result of that was the creation of the national program for rescue solar at risk in 2017. What it was very, uh, very quick creation of public policy of such a national level. So I have done that. So, but it was so complicated to create that program. Not, not only a matter of uh, budget uh, or political resumption, but also uh, that nobody understood what it means scholars, to be scholars at risk. The thing was, okay, uh, we don't have to create something because. If the people want to come, they come. But if they don't come, so so nobody wants to come to France. My position was, it's the contrary. Nobody come to France because it's so complicated for the people. It's, we are too bureaucratic. We don't have short term process. Look at Germany. So politics need narratives. So it's an experience. <laughs> Why didn't my uh, the in the the bureaucrats in high level state government or my sometimes my colleagues or the, my political partner didn't understand what what about I am talking? First, if you read the literature on academic exile, there are a lot a lot of uh, literature in on English from UK from here United States. And um, plenty of things about uh, under try under year of program in USA, seventy years seventy years of the program of UK scholar trees international institute for education work for the archive blah 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 so a lot of things, mm -hmm. and in such a book about the last century, sometimes you have just a footnote of something about France, you know, something about uh, Polish physician in France during the 70s. So France disappeared from such uh, literature. In France, there's very, very, uh, quite nothing. So almost uh, there are something about migration, but in general, no high scale migration. So a lot of uh, literature on migration. And uh, if we're speaking about highly scary immigration, so intellectuals, it's women to the forties in France during the Second World War, when we uh, immigrants came from East Europe through France to other country. So it was something amazing to make a politic with just the picture of people who were thinking, okay, score a twist, it was in the thirties with the Nazi regime, now it's something else. So we forget we were the host country during the last century. And uh, it's not that nobody knows stories, but it's not a topic like that. Scholars of Trace in France, hosting institution, because we don't make any differences in the treatment of the scholars. Also by the refugee outfit, there's no entry for scholars or intellectuals. So, and if you have a look about the international concept, about DPs, immigrants, and now scholars are three, since 20 years. So, you know, it's an evolution about DPs and scholar trees, but not in French. And at that time, it is also that France is not more, is, is any more that welcome or said country. So, if you have a look, the, the rise of the international immigration in Europe, in Germany, it was very high, especially in uh, 2015. But in France, we are not on the top; we are on the bottom. Mm -hmm. The mid, you know, the middle, uh, the middle is uh, the blue. Yeah, the France is blue, and the middle is moved with uh, black. Uh, line. So it's not that we are a uh, very welcoming uh, country now and still today. Well, that, that national program, it was a national program we call 
give the half of the amount of a work contract for one to two years. And the first year it was uh, for Syria and Turkey. And now it was uh, uh, raised with the uh, war in Ukraine and a lot of uh, colleagues come from Ukraine and also for Russia and Belarus and Afghanistan. So, but with the um, conflict in Ukraine, this program has in 22, almost the fellows, an amount of fellows like the five years before. It means we came from 2 million help to 6 million help from the French national government. I can speak about that, but uh, you know, the program exists. So now, say six years, we can have a look about who is coming to France and how they are coming. So in general, if you met the amount of that, there are now something like 700 scholars signed the question of that program. So we can have uh, an overlook now who is coming, how, why the people are coming, how, how they are integrated and so on. But uh, this is a, an institutional matter, and uh, the situation of the scholar on CITES are less known in France. So that's why when I came back to the university in 2017, um, we were engaged with a lot of colleagues to make uh, more research on such a topic and how to make visible also the trajectory of our colleagues. So it was a two things, first research and then outreach. But the first step is not the outreach. The first step is a research project, collective and individual. So for my myself, I changed uh, my subject. I, I was, I should work on Uruguay. Mm -hmm. So because it was a lot of Uruguayan scholars during the seventies, during the dictatorship in France. And uh, just a look of the methodology, I will not explain that it will be too long because I, now I'm making, I have made, uh, because nobody writes about that exile. So it's like to find someone and to to, to find who, who came or passed through France during this period. So it's, uh, it's a lot of work. So I make a lot of interviews and archive and testimony. I make also, also a quantitative uh, analysis on curriculum from all the university today and all the research center to see where I make his PhD in France, Germany, here, United Kingdom, and so on, which uh, scientific contract project, citation, many. Mm -hmm. uh, it and because my interest is all the trajectory, not just the time of the exile. What did the person before and what it bring after that as co collaboration with many uh, countries? So that was the work on Uruguay. And uh, it was uh, very interesting because uh, this um, repression, political repression, some people were directly persecuted, but uh, 17 of the highly skilled intellectual person were flew away. So it was a huge brain drain for them after the uh, dictatorship until now to bring the people back. But many uh, 60, 60 uh, scientists, biologists and mathematics and uh, were in France, was speaking French because the first foreign language in Uruguay until the dictatorship was French because there were a lot of French immigrants during the 19th century. So the elite was speaking French, they were in France and they were around the Institut Pasteur. They have a leading position at CNRS, a biology institute and so on, or oncology. And they make a plan for the reconstruction of the university after the dictatorship from France. And a lot of them came back in uh, 1985 with that plan. So uh, uh, it's an example of one of my uh, interviews. Uh, Fernando Lema, she, he was a biologist in France and came back after that to Uruguay. It's a picture from our exhibition now. You say. So for, for example, with Fernando, I spoke perhaps uh, hundreds of hours because we have many contacts, give me his archive from this association. So I make 
an important work with them. It was the first uh, portrait from our exhibition. So that it means that um, from such individual and collective project, because other people are working on Chile, Ukraine, uh, Spain, all the country, Brazil. Um, I work also with Pierre Jerome, a judge, an artist, a photographer, and we try to make portraits uh, together with an exhibition who was uh, now working around the world. So uh, now it will be the, 20, the 19 exhibition next month. So this is different cultural outreach to diverse public because I know you are very interested in that connection between knowledge and uh, how to reach div diverse publics. But another thing was a new project project research, a new tool, because how to, to make visible and present stories about that migrants. Because when I'm working on Uruguay, when I publish in this book now in April, all the things are anonymous. So I have a lot of interviews with transcript, but there's no second, secondary use for other people. So I was thinking to create a tool with deep mapping stories, digital stories, and like um, an online dictionary. So we have to create uh, a new tool between deep mapping and um, database. So. I can show you now how it looks, but um, we can put out in not only institutional um, information, but also archive, videos, sounds, subjective uh, story, uh, memories, and uh, sensitive uh, migration so representation about that. Um, and it's a co collaborative uh, method and participative because there are many research groups we put them together and they produce collectively that stories on the website. Now in, uh, it was it's now two years project for us was to think how to construct that new tool, digital tool. And the second year was to put information and we have now inside 232 stories, but just 60 are published because we have also an editorial committee, a scientific co committee and we're working with collections. So I make a little video how it works. So you go on the website and uh, you have a map. So you can choose uh, if you want it's interactive. So we choose, for example, Eura in Belarus. The first side is a summary of its trajectory from the start of the studies, the Aizal and after. And you can scroll the text and when the text is scrolling, you are going to very little uh, space, precise space. That story is anonymous because of security matters. So we are going very uh, quick of that uh, and then video. So you know, isn't his real name? Mm -hmm. No, no, it's not his real name. But he, he gave us all the pictures, mm -hmm. that is pictures. Uh, and for example, uh, that when he crossed with um, the war, when he, he was in exile at that point. Uh, so, you know, the, the, the exile is not, so that, that point on the right is um, a conception visualization of the border because we don't, want, we don't want to point where he was really living because that put some other people in danger. But what is important of, of that uh, kind of uh, deep mapping is uh, to see, you know, how many time it takes with the space, because migration stories, uh, you can say what's happened, but uh, it takes time. So that's the collection. So with a museum, with a, uh, research groups. Uh, and if you click on the violet things, you can have all the story well related to such a collection. But you can also go through the index to all the tools to like that, for example. 
with the author like an article, you know, like a journal with the author, topic, name, go to the map, go to the institution. For example, here I can choose uh, many institutions, university, Prime University of Berlin, new school in uh, New York. Now, how WhatsApp is translated in many languages now on English and soon in Spanish, or you can also go on the map from institution and make, for example, Ecole des Études in Paris. So you click and then it proposes you all the story where all later, all the people, and then you can click to individual uh, story. It's interconnected. That's what we created before all this mapping online are not connected but that's connected so you can you can have a look at how many people were there so it's a very new website so it means you have to have we are we want to have many collaboration to make more stories so it's how to understand the exile so and uh so that's what you are with the summary of is exile and we can, another example is from who work in he came uh, for, uh, it's, uh, with only with archive because uh, he came uh, uh, doing the Yiddish program from Russia now Ukraine to Canada and then to France and then with the French going back to USA when the French government was in exile for example and um, here one of my interviews a woman. We, so we take care to have mo a lot of women inside, not just only men. And um, to see how we are speaking about the coup d'etat in Chile and Uruguay, 173, but the, most of the exile went before that day to other, to the to Argentina and Chile, and after the coup in Chile, also to Europe as refugees. It's a, it's okay. So you can see the different period. And what is very interesting for some other scholars, for example, there was a lot of scholars that went to Venezuela or Mexico because they were rich country during the 70s, but they have position, no rescue uh, contract. And during their position, they could have a sabbatical and they went to France to make a PhD. So then you can have a, a many link about how they travel. It's very important. So to make a conclusion that can answer to all the questions is about the thing is that when we speak about scholars at risk, it's meant it's linked to the the institutional reception. What to be scholar at risk, you are not scholar at risk, you are a colleague, but you are under a specific situation. But to have a, a proposition you have to be categorized as scholars at risk. So if you have other job opportunities, you are not scholar at risk. You just need a job outside for your country. But we have also to mention that, uh, for example, with Uruguay, the internationalization of the academic market is part of our job. So when the people are getting back, for them, it's a very good thing to have to be outside of the country. And sometimes it's very uh, complicated to make the difference between scholar at risk or just moving for a better internationalism curricula. Uh, after that, um, what was interesting in, about the intentional thing, it was that similar initiative was taken in France, in Germany, also in Italy and many, a lot of, uh, of country. But uh, my position is that uh, we are here in a, in a top -down, institutionalist top -down approach. It's not our approach. Our approach is to take, um, to focus about individual journeys and trajectory of the people. Because uh, as I said, uh, the thing about scholar trees had to do with the institution, what you need to come. Uh, for example, I, I have a lot of uh, interviews from Uruguay um, if they had a, a grandfather from Italy or from France, they can have a, an European passport, come to Europe. And of that time, if you have a control, you show you, your, the card from the library to show on the street with a police control. It was not so matter as, as now, 
or you can have a contract just for one year as assistant. So the different, the situation was different. You don't need at that time to be scholar at risk. And we are, where you are really, you are no help, no passport, no something, then you have to be refugee. It was another thing. So just this citation from uh, the work of Gatra, you are very close from that about how to write about refugee dumb because uh, uh, scholarship is most in a position from uh, NGO or institution, how to go in that category to have some help. So it's a critical approach. And, but what we are thinking is that um, stories, to present individual stories on that uh, website uh, will, in, I don't know, in 10 years, 20 years, have a testimony to have a secondary use of that stories to compare the trajectory, what does help, the context, the language, and so on, what are the conditions of uh, helping people in what kind of uh, situation if you are a woman uh, or male or transgender or what 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 you are what are we can compare because on the database what is not public the website is public but the database is not public but we can uh, we have a network analyzing so and um i'm it's also a pedagogical project it's important for you here because i also working with master students and uh like a clinical uh, teaching and we're working with NGO. And for example, last year we were working with uh, the NGO art artist in Exarina. It means that my 30 students were working with the uh, NGO. Uh, there was a tandem of, uh, of students and they work each with uh, an artist like that with uh, Halam Jarban on the right. She came from Yemen, she's a graphist. And uh, my student make a presentation with all the NGO, uh, the Museum for Immigration in Paris. And uh, after that, we make um, uh, an academic presentation with uh, other colleagues. And in that day, in the middle, the st two students were presenting what they made in that, uh, that master classes. It means that uh, the students' human rights uh, law, they are not uh, sociologists or something like that. So they learn how to make um, a testimony about someone. What, what can we want or not? What are the legal condition? What can we publish online? How to work with people? With uh, there are some ethical issue also. How to work? And then they learn how to go to the database because uh, to go inside the database, we 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 create something very easy like a word, and then it generates that uh, deep map. This map, so we make also digital uh, instruction. So that's uh, all the collection, and uh, the collection with my students are also a collection. Mm -hmm. But I go to quick here. So and you see there are also a collection with the exhibition. The catalog is here in the room. So you can read when you click on the, on the button all the story linked with that project. And uh, we work also with a museum on the right or with archive. And for example, when the edition went to Montevideo in um, three months ago, it was also to link we have uh, with colleagues we make uh, a conference just only with uh, scholars academic. We work, so I present my work on Uruguay, but also before the conference was all the exhibition. And um, we have also um, Uruguayan scholars who are now working on deep mapping on the website. They produce also narrative. And for them, it was very important because uh, it was a 50 anniversary of the dictature in Uruguay. So it's like producing something for the uh, dictature shape uh, memory at that time. So, you know, that's all the link. But the first step is always the academic perspective. And we produce many things to present to the um, very diverse public 
refugees, students, colleagues, people in the street sometimes, when the museum is open with the exhibition. So that topic to make some uh, advocacy also because uh, it was so hard to create that program. It's hard to maintain to maintain such a program. It's been to have money. So we think that short story or picture or deep mapping, it's better to understand the Isaiah and his condition. So and now nobody wants something about someone in MIT. So put MIT on the map and joint geography. Many thanks. <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Labonnier. That, that was most interesting, and I hope inspiring MIT to uh, come up and participate. I know other institutions, my undergraduate institution, a college at Oxford, I know, has a special program yeah. to support. Uh, academics at risk and if MIT isn't doing it yet perhaps somebody can correct me then I think we would all be in favor but I want to, to go back and ask you about um, what's important how do you see the role of history this is something that goes back a very very long way mm -hmm. that scholars have been yes. uh, at risk do you see this as a con the, the exhibition which is coming to MIT in the spring uh, the article, the book that you've edited, the articles you're writing, the people you're mobilizing, do you see them as trying to make a worldwide movement? Do you see this as something that you want to expand? Do you see it as, and do you see it as scholarship or mobilization or a bit of both? Oh, you know, um, it's difficult to know what you are doing to make something visible to the public. You don't know how it trades where is uh, the public or the institution. So you have many, a lot of effects, very different uh, because um, the, the first effect is to, it's a complicated uh, question. I try to answer uh, very shortly. Um, what I know, for example, the first thing is for those colleagues who participate for those programs, that was very important to make that program. Um, I, I, I am, we told with Elizabeth uh, on the lunch, I said, so I was personally engaged in my university to, to create invitation to scholars of trace, so in Nanterre. I think I um, I was involved in 22 invitations. Mm -hmm. Person came to my university. It was, it was a lot of work because Nantes is not a very rich institution. Mm -hmm. And uh, I met one colleague, and after two months, so he had a work contract, but he said, I am the only person he met on the campus because nobody invited him for a coffee or have a talk about his work, just you know, you make a plan for scholars at risk, it's okay. And then what's happened for, about the integration? Mm -hmm. But the people are not only in exile. It's a moment they didn't choose to be in exile. For example, my colleagues of Istanbul, before they were my colleagues, were many Erasmus exchange with people from Galatasaray mm -hmm. in France. And from one time to the, the other day, they lost their position. And they didn't want to be uh, unemployed. They are still colleagues. And they didn't want to be called in exile because uh, they didn't want to lose their, uh, their, post, their position. So it was an imposition from a dictatorial regime. So it's like colleagues from Ukraine. They didn't want to, to want to have a war in their country from Russia. So the thing is, we we know we make visible how it impacts your academic uh, or artistic trajectory to be in such situation. But that situation is not a permanent situation. So that's why I wanted to present the, the whole life of the people, not just the moment of the exile, but what's happened before, during, and after that also. I think that's and really, that is important for the people who are concerned. That's really important. I want to give a chance first to people who are in this room. Uh, who has questions? Do we have co or comments, discussion about the presentation? 
Yes. I'm just Elizabeth. a very small practical question. I love that the stories can be linked. So you can say, who else was it not there? Mm -hmm. Can they be linked by field of science? Yes, yes. Sir. Who, is who, who is in biology? Who is in the, yes, yes. Yeah. the same? Yeah, yeah. How you can go to the website? You have many filters. Uh, uh, country, period. Um, you have the you have the many uh, fields and the sub-specialization also. You can have uh, many things. Do you know, do you have any evidence whether people are using it? Are people going to the website to find out? Yes, we, well, so we will ask that soon, but now we are very focused about the translation in different languages. And this work, this week, they are working about English translation on all the stories with this lot of work and after that Spanish. So it's a brand new project that uh, that's me take, take time. So will we all be able to uh, when will we all be able to access the now, website in French already? Yeah, uh, French yes, you can uh, be access on French already and uh, now on English, but it doesn't work so so good because it's it's on work. Mm -hmm. But we can go on the website and uh, right yeah, let's can so, we. We can, can we show people how they yes, can. Yes, so. so I can. Uh, can we, can yeah. we do that? Can we link to? I can do that if you want. Yes, girls. Well, you can just go on this one because it's already projected for everyone. Yeah. Yeah. It's something which involves mm -hmm. participation, not mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> audience. It's yeah, nice we can explain how to contribute mm -hmm. or make a contribution. I think that's that's even more, more important. It's, you know, yeah. it's not. Uh, uh, an article proposition to a journal with with a uh, peer review mm -hmm. because you have to word word a text word with some proposition of illustration mm -hmm. and that if you agree we can, it would be uh, put online. Yeah, escape, escape, mm -hmm. and and that so. seems to be something where people from many different disciplines can use as a teaching tool. Yes, which yeah. is also a way of awaking awareness that this issue exists. I can see, imagine it in a his, his history, not just yeah, okay. In certainly in my economics class. Mm -hmm. So okay. So how did you let's go? Okay. Wow. Can so you put the URL in the chat. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. So that's a website. So you know, it's a website. So that's mm -hmm. the. Uh, I don't know. That's the tools. You know what I mentioned. Mm -hmm. yeah. The index and here you see you have many things that, uh, like that. So I try to do it in English, but I, uh, as I said, uh, now they are working on it. So okay. not sure, you know, but uh, but it's accessible in French. France yes, but today, person, today, yes, it's online. And you're putting the. For example, you can choose the person type. Uh, for example, a physician, musician, uh, researcher, teacher, scientist, and the this the field also. And tell me chronologically how the the people that you're that, that you're including in the database they're not just people who are alive today is that no, correct no no how far back historically are you going yeah I think uh, you yeah. have this gives us the the oldest story is uh, that one uh -huh. eighteen sixty nine yes so who is it. Uh, you can uh, so if you do that, uh, okay, that last that's the older stories. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. Marina, it's a famous, this is a famous okay. Okay. <laughs> What's really exciting about this is this is a talk which is about activism, it's not just a talk about scholarly research, mm -hmm. but it's also, as I understand it, about how a tool that we can use in teaching. Yes. If I'm teaching an economics course about migration mm -hmm. and I want to talk about forced migration, mm -hmm. this is one of many strands of forced migration. We're living through uh, political episodes today, which I'm sure are going to be generating more, refu more uh, academics at scholars at risk. Mm -hmm. It's a story from a, a Russian woman to Belgium. Okay. So the the, the Brussels collects put that story when the exhibition came to Brussels, so like that. But uh, for example, with uh, working with students who have um, a conductor of question of interview, 
to have some homogeneous data to compare after that. So I, I can go is, inside the database if you want, that I show you how it works, but... Um, well, we also have a question from the web. Um, but this is, it's very exciting to actually see it at work. Do we have questions in this room first? That, 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 yes, so we want a question demonstration. About oh, there the, we are. Yes, it's, it's very interesting. This, it's a very. Uh, yes, so a question of the story is always do you have support from NGO? What do you have problem with uh, with uh, asylum visa, visa and, and so on? So, um, mm -hmm. So, you could talk about the passport visa. Oh, well, okay. Yes. In France, a new thing, um, it's the same time as the program pause. It was um, that it was created uh, a talent passport visa. It's main, uh, it's a special um, um, visa for. Um, academics and their family and they they can work with that visa and the us has various visas which give precedence to people with an academic jobs or a lot of academic credentials but for france this is new is it new or um but no 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 it's a fast track visa you know okay very very soon you you can you have that automatically and you can work directly and your family also okay. it's not a, a quota do you want the problems with new eu privacy regulations in terms of the database mm -hmm. yes the privacy regulations in the eu yes yes what you can say about somebody how oh, you mean about the data in the base Put it on the data. Put it on the data. Yeah, 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 yeah. So of course we have uh, so we have many steps or so we have um uh RGP, RGPD, RGPD. Mm -hmm. So we have um, to all the people that have to sign uh, what they want to publish or not. But we are going uh, we are making more of that because it's mean that uh, um when we write in something. We present that to, uh, for a living person. We present what we are publishing to the person. To, at each step, not only the person signs the LGPD, but we are working at each step with the person about to putting such a story online. And we are very careful about uh, the danger. And when we are thinking that so much danger, we, we make the story anonymous, like you are. And sometimes, uh, some uh, stories are not published because um, if you make it too anonymous, uh, you can put nothing on the web. There's no sense. And we don't want to put people in danger. We are very careful with, with that. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can change any time what you want. If you said, don't publish it, just a click and it's away, you know, but it's still in the database. And to go inside the database, it's protect, it's pro it's protect because the database is um, on the Iris French uh, data protection website. It's a national consortium and it's permanent. Mm. It's not a private a private website. The database is on TGR Umanum. It means it's a national consortium with all the security mm -hmm. for researchers. So there are many steps about that data. And uh, the, now the European regulation interpretation change uh, every year. So we try to do our best to, uh, to, to change. So mm -hmm. for example, it changed self, the interpretation in France changed Science next year. So we change how GPD each time with the people. But uh, mostly the people want to be on the map. You know, we have a question of someone, people are coming to us and say, I want to be on the map, uh, please. So, but just to be in the map, it's uh, like to write an article, just 
not so to make an interview with you. We need to write an article. Because so do you, suppose that somebody telephones you or, or sends you an email or like you yes. says, I want to be on the map. Do you have a questionnaire that you send them? How do, no, you, no. do you interview them on the no no on the data web? Yeah, on the website. How do you collect? I no no. How can you contribute? It's here. You know, it's here. It's just explain here how to contribute. It's like that. Mm -hmm. We we should to put now the, this text on English now, mm -hmm. but you know it's like that. So uh, it's like a journal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. We make that shows. So it's uh, if, you know, uh, if you go here where we we are, we're all academics uh, mm. in the team. So it means it's like in in um, you know. Uh, it's an international mm -hmm. team in France, uh, and all the people are in the group mm -hmm. and uh, debating about what can we publish, what interests, uh, and we have also partner from NGO, we have internees, uh, assistant, and uh, our technical infra infrastructure is in Australia. Mm -hmm. In Australia? Yes. Mm -hmm. It's your team here. It's your Very nice guy uh, because they are specializing about working with social scientists mm -hmm. because it's a lot of work to say what we want and to do that so mm -hmm. it's uh, it, it takes a lot of time but with the representation all we all need and we were very pleased to work with you and we still work with them they are putting now the english german spanish and so on version online mm -hmm. and and that it means that not only that people but for example that um, uh, there are many uh, colleagues that are, they have collective groups. So, for example, Shoa Makaremi has a group about, um, about Iran exile. Rono Hervoué just won um, a research project with uh, 20 colleagues about Ukraine, Belarus, mm -hmm. uh, and so on. Nicole, uh, Nathalie, she's working in a research center about um, Chile. Catherine Gousseff about Russia and uh, Analia in Argentina. You know, all the people are connection with other groups. So there are perhaps uh, 50 mm -hmm. scholars implicated in the, this website. So when someone proposed to publish someone, something, we are speaking with them, all the, all the team. Okay, and we have a question um, over here. Just a very quick question. Thank you for your presentation. Um, although the main focus is uh, academics in exile. There was one slide that referred to artists in exile. I wonder if you've done any work with that and uh, if you could say a few words. Yes, so th that project is highly intellectual and artistic scale migration, so all the things. And we work especially about artists in Syria and Yemen, Syria and Iraq. We wrote an article, but it's a comparison of trajectory. Because it's this, uh, because working on academic exiles doesn't mean nothing. What is academic exile? Because if you are a biologist, a sociologist, a historian, that's completely different curricula. curricula. So, and the same for artists. If you are in the theater, a writer, or singer, or theater, or jazz man, it's very different. So, for us, it's very good to compare what does that trajectory because, uh, for example, of the level of the languages, how it is important. For example, to be a, a professor in literature is not the same thing to be a physician or a biologist, but the same for artists. So are all the people in the same situation because of economic condition, political condition, or it depends of the field, of the some specificity like languages or job market, uh, you can you can try to compare the differences. Something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, did you answer Nora's question? And um, since she was asking how people uh, could uh, learn about the, the, it, the prove their, that they were persecuted in their country, but also how could they prove that they're a scholar? Um, you mean in the project yeah. or no, no, no. question that was here on the okay. question yeah. answer. But uh, I did didn't you answer. Did you answer? No, but I didn't until um, raise it. Yeah, uh, it just 
Who here? Yeah, no. We need a box of the technology. <laughs> but let's go back to. I just wanted to make sure. It's but no, because it's important. Yes, it's important. But you mean not in our research, but in general about scholar twists. Yeah, I think she's asking about um, refugees' cases need to prove persecution. Are there similar processes for someone proving that they're a scholar for your purposes? I think. So how do you decide someone is a scholar? It does no, no, help if they're a high school teacher. No, no, no you you it. mind on the database on the website. Well, she's also talking about for getting visas and authorized entry. Sometimes yes, you have to but, prove you're a scholar to meet that special visa. But. I don't understand if the question is for the situation of scholar risk in France or in it the seems, project. It seems that it's about scholar risk in France, yes, to show to get a visa. Yes, so it's, uh, it's like here or somewhere else, so like uh, International Institution for Education, Scholar Risk to Fund, or all that this year, you have to prove you are an academic and a twist in the same. But for our research project, it's very different because we didn't, uh, we, the project is understood academy exile, high scale exile. So it means that uh, our position is that our notarian regime, what many things, disturb the academic trajectory mm -hmm. and it's no matter to know what your is your real situation because it's not you have refugee, not refugee, a twist, not a twist. It's a lot of things because to be a twist, you are you are killed before to go. You are not in exile, and so there are a lot, a lot of situation. It's not very easy. So we we can put trajectory inside we're not sure what are the people but their trajectory were impacted by the political or geopolitical or economic situation that's the matter so um for example um i make an interview with a woman she's now president of um, the university of science in montevideo and uh, she said she was not an exiled person she knew a lot of Kashmir because she was young. She go to France. She, she was uh, perhaps a master's student, and she wants to make her PhD in France. Why? Because uh, all the professors in her field were dismissed. What was the professor doing? A dictatorship. It was not colleagues, but it was a friend, political friend of the political regime. It means the research was not very intensive. So she make her PhD in France. And in France, she meets different uh, committees, uh, Liberation for America Latin, and so, so and uh, uh, the PhD director was a political refugee. So it was uh, the main leader of the university mm -hmm. there, came to France. He was our director, and she was very engaged about the situation in Latin America. So it's been she was not a refugee. She came to make a patient for a very normal situation of uh, academic international exchange. But when she was in France, in that situation, uh, she doesn't want to go to Uruguay for holidays because she feels she was not sure if she was a twist or twist if she come back or not because she can be. Uh, inter yeah. inter have an integration yeah. uh, interrogation from the police, for example, and some people uh, they they explained me they were very surprised to be arrested uh, because uh, they just look of um, demonstration the university who was kidnapped and they were in jail. So nobody knows what's happened in such situation. It means you can go somewhere, and after that you know in the political archive that your your name was in the archive. And if you came back, you, you were at risk, but you didn't know that. So how thing to understand the situation, it's also very important to, as political science work about resistance in the country, and also uh, people uh, who make uh, some many travel during this period. For example, if you take now the situation of Cameroon with uh, English speaking colleagues, they are at risk. But they are not going outside. So some are in jail, but uh, many are 
taking the chance of uh, very short term invitation to many countries like France or UK, Germany, or United States to maintain a legitimate position in the system in their country. So they don't go to exile. So some are sometimes in jail, but the most of them maintain contact. So, you know, it's an in between situation. And it is uh, sometimes with this actor the case. I, that makes so much sense because a lot of times being a refugee is not necessarily that you ran over the border, you walked, you drove yeah. across the border and you were uh, picked up by the UN High Commission for Refugees. It's that you leave and you leave early or you leave late. And that's part one of the tricky things is who can afford to leave. Mm. I think that, you know, so one thing that, that I would be concerned about is finding people who need to leave but have not yet been able to leave. And yes. how does one yes. find those people? Yes. Um, when you when economists look at, at uh, the economics of refugees, sometimes they look at what country did people come from and not what kind of visa did they have, for mm -hmm. example. Because yes. you don't, it's not just the people who are officially recognized yes. with a visa or a passport or a temporary permission to stay who are the refugees. Mm -hmm. it's, the people who left as soon as they could. Yes. And again, we have to worry about the socioeconomic condition that, mm. that the people who can afford to leave early yes. are the people who are financially able to do that. Mm. And the people who leave across the border at the last minute are the mm. people who had no other way. Yes, that's why it's, that, that's, um, that's in such, such a story because I, I have stories from people in Uruguay, they were living on the streets, you know, with a baby. Mm -hmm. So they were, they, they were after that refugees in Europe, but other people, the, the, the parents just pay a flight yeah. ticket and came here without refugees. So it's a two different situation. Mm -hmm. Yes, exactly. Do we have any further questions? Yeah, I have a question. Yes. Mm -hmm. So it, I think that thank you very much for your presentation. I think it's wonderful to see that there's an advocacy side and there's a research side. Uh -huh. and that they both interconnect. And so I was wondering, the work of PAUSE, how that impacted the, the immigration law in France? And has it been be a little bit? <laughs> <laughs> it will be, I wish it would have impacted the immigration law in France, but... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> and Yeah, I have probably very related questions to uh, policy making questions yeah. because you mentioned that in, that you had started in 2017 so uh, nobody knows what is scientists in exile or something like this not mm -hmm. nobody knows but uh, it was not a production yeah exactly. like so, yeah, yeah. Yeah, something. yeah you're right so uh, right now what is the impact of your project on this policy making process in order to uh support those scientists in exile and to outline them uh, from all the scientists and how to support mm -hmm. probably national level and probably EU level. Okay, so I just can speak for French, but uh, France, but uh, so when you speak with uh, ICV7 in the uh, national administration in France, mm -hmm. they are thinking you have one to year work contract and after that, you are integrated. If you have, you don't have a job, or it's your fault, you know. Mm -hmm. But what we are trying to show that with a very successful story, for example, with the Uruguay or Chile or Latin America, you have 50 years ago, you can see what are the people now. Sometimes some are very important scientists in the world, and how is difficult, how time it takes. So two years is nothing. You need minimum five years. Mm -hmm. So, and um, pros and other NGO part are participating in the European project, e ENSP Europe, and they make comparisons about the economic uh, conditions of those. And we all agree you need five years. So that's why um, in France, uh, pros or uh, the new project, Université in Exil, Uxin, mm -hmm. They are present in our website where we can read story because with that story, all the successful story, you show how 
many times, many space you need to make a successful career. Not only immigration from point, point A to B, but you see that uh, near, so it's very complicated. It's not just uh, that uh, line. Mm -hmm. and uh, But it takes time. And mm -hmm. that's why that when you scroll, it takes time to scroll, to read, and to move, you know, just not a linear uh, narrative. So mm -hmm. I hope it's, it helps, so, but uh, what do process research is uh, also another impact I expected. Thank you very much, Professor Laborier. Um, and I want to make sure everybody knows this. This is a general cat sort of catalog for the exhibition, which I don't do we can you put it on the screen? Mm -hmm. Which is uh can they see it? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, which is I don't know whether the letters are back to front, mm -hmm. but we'll send a link. <laughs> <laughs> but we'll post a link. The, this exhibition is coming to MIT in April, and the, anybody who's on our mailing list will get notification. And I also want to take the opportunity to let people who are attending today know that you can get on our email list, and you will post a link that people can use chat. to get mm -hmm. on in the chat so that you know how to get on the email list for the uh, International Committee on uh, uh, Inter-University Committee on International Migration which is based here at MIT. Thank you, everybody in who came in person. Thank you, everybody who is following online. And we hope to see you at our next um, seminar. And we will be sending out announcements. So sign up if you're not already on the list.